In fact, within BEAST, as I mentioned before, there's quite a lot of sub-models that go within it. So the first of which you will have heard about this morning is the mutation model. It's the model which describes the A to G rate, the C to T rate. So when you set up a beta analysis, in fact, you need to set each of these three models. So in the mutation model, you, you have various choices. You can choose between the HKY model or the GTR, the general time reversible model. You can also choose one of these codon models. Um, the reason for this is that you, particularly in a virus sequence where so much of its coding is that you might think the first, the first is really the first two positions within, within the codon, so the codon containing three nucleotides, the first two positions, they're the ones which are really to do with change in the amino acid. And that third position is mostly, not entirely, just gives you synonymous mutation. So you might want to make a model which accounts for that codon structure. So that's what the, it's called the SRD06 model. It's the, the SRD is the initials of the author that made the model. Um, and there you have an HKY model on positions one and two, and then a different, a slightly different HKY model on position three. Or you can have a Yang model where each codon position gets its own GTR model. All of the models can include site to site rate variation. So remember when I said that some positions are conserved. Well, some positions are conserved, some positions are sort of medium low variable, some positions are medium high variable, and some positions are high variable. And so you might want to account for that variation of um, variability. And you do that by using a gamma model. Uh, typical choices would be for TB, you would use the HKY model with site-to-site site site variation in four categories and the, and the distribution of the four categories are described by a gamma distribution, so that would be a gamma form model. For flu, because that's um, a very strongly coding, uh, coding sequences, you would use the SRD06 model and allow site-to-site -site rate variation as well, again with, the, um, with four categories of possible rate variations. Okay, so that's the mutation model. A clock model. So the mutation models just describe A to G, C to T. The clock model gives you the overall number of uh, average substitutions per site per year. You could have one clock model for the entire tree, mostly because you might think, okay, well, all the sequences are from the same population, they're in the same host, so we're going to have one clock model to describe everything. However, if you're dealing with a slightly more diverse situation, um, perhaps you've got slightly different host viruses from slightly different host species, or they're from slightly different locations, or there might be slightly different epidemics going on because you're dealing with a wider situation, you might say, okay, well, it's not going to literally be exactly one clock rate for everything. What we might want to do is allow some parts of the tree to have a slightly faster clock rate than the other parts. And in that case, you would use a relaxed clock model. There, you've still got the idea of you've still got an average clock rate, but you just have um, rate multipliers for part of the tree to go a bit quicker than other parts of the tree. The final thing that you need to set for a normal beast analysis is a thing called a population model. And just to say there are Again, several choices for this, but I will describe to you just now what I mean by that.